Today I'm in a place that's a little old, a lot of new, and lots of fun. Can you guess? Athens, this is going to be great. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and admittedly, I am a pushover for archaeology and ancient sites, so I can honestly say I am thrilled to welcome you to Athens. You know, I was here about 10 years ago, and the thing that impressed me most on this trip were the changes in the city. I mean, because of the 2004 Olympics, Athens has been reborn. There's a new international airport. The hotels have been refurbished. The archaeological sites are clean and well-maintained. And the roads are new, and air pollution controls everywhere. So the traffic and the smog of 10 years ago is almost a thing of the past. Athens is a great place to be, and I'm really excited to show it to you. Athens, a city of history and mythology, home to the ancient Greek gods, to Socrates and Plato, and where democracy was born. While it may be the ancient civilization that draws the crowds, it's the Athens of today that's impressing them now. This is a with it city that's totally today. Athens may be one of the most historical cities in Europe, but it's also one of the newest, definitely revitalized. The 2004 Olympic Games brought international attention back to Athens, and now the city is proudly showing off its new look. Syntagma Square is the center of Athens, totally restored, with a big open-air feel and a beautiful new fountain. When you come to Syntagma Square, go to the fountain, bring a coin, make a wish, and throw it in the fountain. Someday you'll come back to Athens. Or oh, is that the Trevi Fountain in Rome? Facing the square, the Parliament House is where to see the changing of the guard every hour. But Sundays are when the real show happens. Hey, let's kick it up. Now that's what I call a new look. Also on the square is one of the most historical buildings in Athens. Here, anyone who's anyone has walked through the front door. The Grand Britannia Hotel has been the most luxurious hotel in Athens for over a century, hosting almost every celebrity and world leader to visit Greece for decades. With its location on Syntagma Square next to the Parliament Building, the last hundred years of Greek history has literally unfolded at the doorstep. And even if you don't stay here, it's worth checking out. Officially a world-class city, the new Athens has something for everyone. From designer duds to newfangled newsstands. These little kiosks are the Athens versions of 7-Elevens. They stay open all day and late into the night. You get magazines and snacks and papers and cigarettes and souvenirs, whatever. And if they don't have what you want, they'll give you directions to go find it, sometimes in English. Getting around Athens is a lot easier nowadays. Good thing, because you'll definitely want to see all the sights. The Metro isn't just the newest, most modern and impressive transit system I've ever seen, and it's not just a way to get from here to there. It's also a way to get from now to then. 2,500 years ago then. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. Hop on the brand new Metro for a trip back in time to the most famous site in Greece, the Acropolis. Or is it the Parthenon? Wait a minute, what's the difference? My guide Sophia told me the Acropolis is the whole hill, the site itself. The Parthenon is the main building, kind of like an ancient church. It was built after the Persian Wars of the 5th century BC as a way for the Athenians to offer their gratitude to the goddess. 
It was a way for Pericles, the politician, to solve problems like soldiers coming back from the war without jobs. It gave them something constructive to do, and it was a way for the Athenians to celebrate their victory, too. So in this building, we see all the culture, all the civilization, all the science. Through cold marble material, we can read the spirit of ancient Athens. I asked Sophia which came first, the Parthenon or the pyramids? And sorry, Athens, but Egypt wins the oldest structure contest. And speaking of structure, here's some Greek 101. The Parthenon is considered to have the best example of Doric-style columns. We're talking architecture here. The Erechtheion, the more sacred site, is considered to have the best Ionic ones. I think grade school is all flashing back to me now. The Doric is the planar. I learned this exactly. in like fourth grade. <laughs> The uh, onyx is the curly, is the curly the more, uh, and Corinthian decorate. is the other one? Yes, it has acanthus leaves hanging from right. the capitals uh, of the columns. But then we have these ladies over here. I didn't it's learn like about that. <laughs> Unfortunately, all of them are copies. Down here, what Down is this? Down here is Propylia. It's the entrance. It's a magnificent entrance to the Acropolis, to the top of the hill. Covering the ground are what's left of statues and artifacts the ancient Greeks dedicated to their goddess Athena. But I couldn't help noticing these valuable artifacts were in a bit of, well, disarray. Wouldn't you think that someone should sort of pick up now and then? They're just laying on the ground. They're not in the museum. Are they going to be rebuilt, uh, or what's the plan here? Well, <laughs> that's very difficult to say because there are too many. Some of them that they know of where to put them back, they will. Right. Some of them will just uh, stay on the spot. And there are certain letters or numbers which means that they've been studied and catalogued, but um, we don't necessarily, you know, just uh, be able to replace them. All stones, all marbles literally talk to us. It's. Um, it's a big puzzle to put them all back together, but uh, because of the inscriptions, because of the little details we have on them, they would give us everything of the ancient world. Here's a tip. There's a wheelchair lift at the north side of the Acropolis. Taxis are allowed to drop wheelchairs at the top of the pedestrian path. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Athens, go to lauramackenzietv.com. For me, the true test of any great city has to be the shopping. Well, did you really expect me to say the infrastructure? Anyway, Greece is on the Euro now. In fact, they were the first country to hop on board. So now, figuring out the exchange rate is just plain simple. And the prices, just look at the bargains here. Shopping is great in Athens, from the old world open air markets, now that's fresh, to the world famous Plaka shopping district. Athens ranks high on my list. This is the place for great bargains on gold jewelry and other Greek treasures. That's what I call local color. Now I'm getting hungry. Oh, this is the eye that protects you from bad luck. The evil and eye? The evil eye, but it protects you from evil. And we don't really believe in it, the Greek people, but uh, we just want to be on the safe side, <laughs> just in case. So this is the placa. Tell me a little bit about this that. This is the placa. This is an area where you can find almost everything. It's lots of shops. It's houses where people still live in the area. Ancient Greek ruins, Roman ruins. And I mean, this is really the main shopping area. Now we see a lot of gold jewelry. Um, the designs are interesting. A lot of the shops specialize in what they call the Greek, the Greek designs. So um, 
There's a key design, is that right? What there is a mean? key design, which is an imitation of the, an ancient river called the Meander River. And this river uh, symbolizes life. So that symbolizes that uh, it's eternal life. You flow with the river. You go with the flow. And then we see the, the, ro the gold ropes, which are interesting. And the ropes, because the Greeks always used to make ropes and export ropes all over the world. They used them to build the Acropolis, the cranes that they used to pull up the stones, the marble for the Acropolis for their boats as well. And the From coins? From the time on uh, Constantinople. That's and the wonderful. coins, because the Greeks always, I mean, were the first people to mint their own coins. And uh, so this is a copy of the ancient Greek coins. Is it safe to buy here? The shopkeepers are honest. It's absolutely safe to buy here. And they'll ship it for you if they you want. ship it for you. And then you bargain? With and you can bargain. A little bit, even yes. in the shops? Yes, you okay. can bargain. OK, great. And, and they take credit cards. Yes. So, we are in the Placa, and the word Placa means flat because it's a kind of a flat area below the Acropolis. But we're walking uh, up a hill. We're going up the hill. And also Placa can mean a slab of marble that was found here. Oh, okay. And we have the Roman ruins on our right, the Turkish mosque, the Tower of the Winds, the Turkish school, and the residential area, which is straight ahead of us, and where the people still live, because history in Greece is still alive. And by the way, that was my grandmother's home. Serious? Serious. That is my grandmother's home. And this is where we used to sit at the steps and look at our friends passing by and gossiping. Constructive criticism, we call it. Well, there's one thing that Greeks like to do more than gossip, and that's eating. All this walking has made me hungry, too. There are so many choices here in Athens. For a quick, inexpensive bite, try a souvlaki. Grilled lamb on pita bread with a spicy yogurt dressing. It's Greek for fast food. One souvlaki? Thank you. Souvlaki, very good. Very good. That was yummy. And now that I'm powered up, I'm ready for more Ancient Ruins 101. What was the Agora? What used to happen here? The Agora in reality was the heart of the city. It was a place where uh, politicians, where men coming from other city states, uh, passed from here to get informed of the life. Let's say it was like the newspaper of uh, the city of Athens. Uh, I mean, they didn't have uh, phone calls to get informed of the life here, so they were coming to the market. It was not only the commercial center of the city, but it was the civil, the political, the religious center of the city. Everybody passed from here. Pericles, Socrates, it was a place of men. A place of men, so women weren't allowed? Proper women, no, but uh, prostitutes and slaves could come here. Walking through all this ancient history, it just gives me chills. Here's a tip. Taxis charge extra for each piece of luggage and make sure the meter's turned on when you drive away. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Athens, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Like any cosmopolitan city, Athens really comes alive after dark. When the sun goes down, the Greeks come out to play, and the placa is where to find it. Restaurants cover the sidewalks and alleyways, transforming the placa area of the city into one big party. Hey, I'm getting hungry. For one of the most beautiful and romantic evenings you'll have in Athens is the Roof Garden Restaurant at the top of the Grand Britannia Hotel. What a view. And what a hotel. If candlelight and open-air views of the Acropolis sound like an evening you'd enjoy, then this is the place. If trendy nightclubs are your scene, Athens has that too. And summer is when it all goes outdoors, like this open-air nightclub on the water. And for a more traditional evening of Greek entertainment, check out the Greek Dance Theater. 
It's all Greek to me, but it's fun and good times for the entire family. Opa! So what was your favorite part of Greece? Souvlaki, cats and dogs, boats. I just like Greece. Good, me too. Shopping in Athens can be high style or an adventure. For those looking for a little fun as well as a bargain, the flea market is a great place to soak up some local color. This is the Monastiraki, where you can spend a morning combing through the alleys, where haggling is expected and where everyone comes out a winner. Flea Market 101, and I don't care if you're in London, Athens, Paris, wherever. You leave your credit cards and your money in the hotel safe, bring a few small bills, and don't forget to bargain. And remember, if you're a tourist coming to the flea market, you've got a big old bullseye right here in the middle of your forehead. Take me, take me! So sharpen those bargaining skills and come out swinging. Trash or treasure, you decide. to find a true antiquity here. Yeah, sometimes you can find. Oh, like this, look. This looks like it's very, very old. It's not, it's not. It's very easy to understand it's not old. And are you allowed to take antiquities out of the country? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes, yes. If they have a certificate, yes. Right, and what qualifies as an antiquity? How old? If it's before Christ, for us. Old is whatever is 500 right. years, that's brand new. Oh, yes. And, it's um, very young. Would the shopkeeper know if this was an antiquity, or would he try to tell you it is and it really isn't? Most of the times I would say no. I have no idea. And we're expected to bargain, yes? Oh, yes, oh. for sure. If you don't bargain, he will bargain by himself. <laughs> so I like the Greeks. They're fun. <laughs> Come on, let's see what's over here. Okay. Don't worry about how you'll get it home. You can always buy an extra bag here in the market. Most important, just have fun. Hey, all this haggling is making me hungry. You have to experience a Greek taverna. Good food, reasonable prices. Ooh, yum, yum. Tavernas are more casual than the trattoria or traditional restaurants, and they're usually outside. Taverna menus feature Greek standards like spinach pie, moussaka, stuffed grape leaves, Greek salad, and fried cheese. It's all good, cheap, and quick. Here, they're the place to get a quick bite, meet friends, and catch up on the gossip. Like the Cafe Neo, which the Greek men have been coming to for generations to socialize, share family news, swap rumors, eat and drink. While beer is gaining popularity with the Greeks, the drink of choice is still ouzo, always served with a glass of water on the side and sometimes with a short cup of strong Greek coffee. Yow! Afterwards, how about sampling a few Greek specialties? For that, we go off the beaten path and check out some of that local color. You never know what you'll find. Handmade sandals, comfy. How about the natural sponges for your bath, a Greek specialty? Spices and other gifts for the chef at home. Ah, pastries, my favorite. Ooh, exotic Persian beads, not Greek, but beautiful. Hand-sewn religious garments, now that's not something you see every day. Interesting stuff, but I'm trying to kick the, uh, habit. Gotcha. Religious items are common in Athens shops. Here, faith and craftsmanship run hand in hand in the old world tradition of wood carving, passed down for generations. These treasures make unusual souvenirs and great gifts. What's the best seat on the plane? best seat on the airplane, for my money, is the exit row seat. It's kind of the poor man's first class. And those seats are only assigned at the gate. So it's an incentive to get to the airport early, to check in early, and then to go right to your gate and be the first in line to ask for an exit row seat. 
Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Athens, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Greece is definitely a great place for a vacation. The ancient ruins, the friendly people, that incredible Mediterranean. So what do you think? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I told you you'd like Greece. So now, when your neighbor says, Greece, what do you want to go there for? You can say, because I saw it and I like it. I'm Laura McKenzie. Thanks for sharing it with me. Be sure to join me next time from another great place somewhere else around the world. From Athens, bye-bye.